I'm Sophie Radcliffe. I believe that everyone has the opportunity to achieve whatever feels extraordinary for them. My mission is to break down the physical and mental barriers that stop people achieving their goals and becoming the person they dream of becoming. I'm an endurance athlete, adventurer and blogger, but it didn't always used to be this way. Three years ago, I left my job in a London 9 to 5 startup in search of creating a new story. My One Life Live It philosophy started when I was 18. I was travelling and my mum called me one day and she said to me that she had been diagnosed with breast cancer. It was really difficult for me to deal with that, especially because I was halfway across the other side of the world. I wanted to be there for her, but I couldn't. And I remember this feeling all of a sudden, I was sort of, you know, 80, careless, partying, and all of that came crashing down in a second and nothing mattered. And that's when I realized life is so short and if something like this can happen, then anything can happen. It all started when I was 22. I graduated from university, I took a job in sales in London and I was ambitious, but I very quickly felt like I couldn't progress in the way that I wanted to. So I decided I needed a challenge outside of work to stick all my energy into. I wanted to get fit and I found this adventure race in the jungle of Borneo. The moment I set eyes on it, I knew it was the one for me. So I started training for it. For six months, I raised a bunch of money for charity and I got on playing with 40 people I'd never met before and headed off to the Borneo jungle. The race itself was a week-long adventure race through the jungle in teams of four. We were camping alongside rivers in these kind of big army tents uh, with all the mosquitoes flying around. We kayaked each day, we mountain biked, we ran through the jungle. It was so hot and so humid. And I just remember a lot of time thinking, I've never ever run this far. I've never cycled this far. I've never done anything in these conditions that felt so extreme. But it was that teamwork that really pulled us through. Um, and then the last part of the challenge was to climb the highest mountain in Southeast Asia, Mount Kinabalu. And getting to the top of that was one of the most incredible moments of my entire life. I remember looking out over the South China Sea at 7am in the morning as the sun was rising and just thinking, I can't believe I'm here. And all the obstacles I'd overcome, all the things I'd proven to myself that I could do that I didn't think I could do, they were all there, they were all now part of my life and my memories that I could keep with me forever. Standing on top of the mountain, I knew my life was never going to be the same. I had this feeling of confidence and self-belief and empowerment and I'd set myself the biggest goal I could imagine and gone out and achieved it and done things that I was petrified of. I was supposed to stay in Borneo for another two weeks and go scuba diving and hang out but actually the next day I changed my flight, I flew back to London and I walked into work. My colleagues were so surprised to see me and um, they were like, what are you doing here? Shouldn't you be on a beach having fun on holiday? And I just said to them, I'm ready. I've never felt this fired up before. I've never felt this motivated, this driven. And I don't want to waste this feeling sitting on a beach. It led to this domino effect where I was going out and setting myself these challenges on my weekends and holidays, and then plugging all that energy and drive and motivation back into my work and my goals. And it just started to flow. And the turning point came for me when I developed the courage to go out there and say, yeah, I'm going to do this, I'm going to give this a shot. Before then, I was scared. I was wrapped up in cotton wool of security and my nine to five job and going to the pub with my friends and just doing normal everyday stuff. And, but I'd, been, I'd started doing these, these, these adventure challenges and each time it gave me more and more confidence. It was building my fire inside. It was building this thing inside me that was saying, Sophie, you can you can do this and once I started letting that feeling into my life and seeing how much of an impact that feeling could have for me I then started to think well if this feeling's had such a great impact for me then maybe it could also be something that other people might like as well and I started to find ways in which I could create a business around helping other people create that feeling for themselves that experience those moments where they think I can do anything now. The night before I quit my job, I phoned my brother and I said to him, I think I'm going to quit my job. And he said to me, are you sure? What are you going to do? 
I said, I don't know, but I've got all these skills and these passions and these things I really want to do and I want to try and create a positive impact. But I was absolutely petrified. I knew that that unknown was so scary. I had no map. I had no idea where to turn next. And he was really scared of me taking that, that, that leap. We talked about it and he said to me, Sophie, that's the dream, that's what everybody wants to do, is just quit their job and follow their passion and try and create a new life. I said to him, well, I've looked into it and I've thought about what the worst case scenario is and I'm ready to take that leap of faith. And the other piece of advice I got the night before I quit my job was, um, I called up a, a friend who at the time was a close mentor of mine and I said I explained the situation and he'd been helping me ongoing sort of advising me in you know ways to, to speak to my bosses about what I wanted to do and he said to me a ship in a harbour is safe but that's not what the ship was built for go sailing <laughs> One day, I will not be able to do this. Today is not that day. Challenge Sophie it started off about me just going out whenever I could, climbing mountains, having these adventures that I loved that inspired me. And when I started to be able to turn that into my career, it wasn't something that happened overnight. It was a long, painful, lonely, hard, scary, broke journey. I'm trying to run to train for the marathon and all I can think about is everything that I haven't done. I feel so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Even now, it's nothing is set in, in stone, nothing is for certain. I go through times when I think, wow, this is fantastic, and other times when I think, how am I going to make this happen? Where I'm struggling to pay the rent or thinking about, you know, where my next leads are going to come from. If someone's looking to take a big leap in their life, I would say that you've got to dream big, have a big dream ahead of you. You've got to face your fears and go towards them. Take your fears with you on your journey. You've got to get the right people on your bus, and have a good support network around you, it's super important. And finally, you've got to go out and relentlessly create opportunities. Be passionate, be enthusiastic, and don't stop when it gets hard. I feel really passionate that I've been able to get Challenge Sophie to a place where I'm able to do the things that I love. But my focus now is using that platform to help other people. If I can help people change by showing them what's possible, by providing them with support, inspiration and tools to make positive changes in their lives, that's my goal. It doesn't matter what we look like. It doesn't matter what anyone else tells us we should look like. What matters is what we can do and how you feel every day, waking up in the morning and going out into the world. Why fit in when you're born to stand out? I'm Sophie Radcliffe, you've got one life, live it.